Cargill equals the consecutive tournament list. 68 in a row. My first tournament was back in 2009 in Wellington in New Zealand. Um, yeah, it was a pretty special uh, tournament to be playing uh, for my first England appearance. And we went on to win the tournament with an amazing last minute try by uh, Dami Dami. All the training you kind of never really prepared you for. Playing, especially in Wellington, as, as your first playing in front of 20, 30,000 raving, crazy people. It was an amazing experience and one of my many fond memories of uh, playing sevens. The first tournament I was involved in was Edinburgh 2008. I was 23 years old. Um, probably came into the game a lot later than some of the guys now. Um, but yeah, it's the start of the journey, I suppose. Being involved in England Sevens back then was amazing. I remember a phone call from Ben Ryan, jumping around the house, all excited that I'd been selected, no one to tell. <laughs> it's a sellout crowd here at the Soccer Bowl Stadium to greet James Rodwell tonight, celebrating his 50th tournament in the England shirt. My biggest career highlight was my 50th cap in Hong Kong. My parents were there uh, watching. Simon had arranged for me to run out onto the pitch first, which felt like about 10 minutes before everyone else when I was standing in the middle just looking around at uh, the most amazing crowd, a full pack, so composed stadium, something I'll never forget. And uh, we went on to win and I, I actually scored in that game as well. And it, it was just uh, the whole weekend was incredible. The career highlight for me has to be London 2009. We were down against New Zealand in the final and I get the call from Ben Ryan that I'm going on. I was pretty surprised when he pointed and looked at me and said, Duncan, I thought, didn't think he was talking to me, to be honest. But um, came on, got the ball one instant and just ran for my life and was able to get around um, and score in the corner. And then we went on to win the tournament, so that's quite special. Had some family there watching as well, and it gave me a massive lift and just gave me a big buzz to kind of be able to say that I've been able to come on and do that. For me, the try scoring is obviously pretty important, but scoring the two in the try was pretty special. Norton, there's got the jet wheels on, Dan Norton! Dan Norton makes history! He becomes the second Englishman to score 200 tries! Playing in Hong Kong is amazing regardless, but to be able to say that, you know, I've scored a thousand points and scoring 200 tries is just amazing. It came from the kick from, uh, from Sticky Hands, Tom Mitchell, then I just kind of chased it. Got some nice bounces and was able to get the ball over the line by a few kicks from my left leg, right leg. Got it down and then just had a lot of energy and just felt, you know, a massive buzz. It's quite an amazing feeling. James Robwell equals the consecutive tournament list, 68 in a row, for an outstanding servant to English rugby in this England team. Last weekend in Hong Kong, I, I matched Frankie Huang's record for 68 consecutive tournaments on the World Series. Um, so this week in Singapore, I get the chance to, to go one above him. It is a, a great achievement to have, um, but probably one that when I look back, at when I finish my career, it will mean more to me and, um, and I keep telling my son about it and <laughs> keep, keep reliving it for him, he'll probably get a bit bored. He makes a big impression in every game he plays James Rodwell. James has been quite a special player to be fair, you know, for him to be able to play in as many consecutive tournaments as he has is pretty special. You know. He has some great value, some leadership skills and being able to back back a rugby ball and win a few lineups is pretty special but he works hard in every game and he's, uh, yeah, he's an, I don't really want to say this, but a phenomenal athlete for his age. <laughs> He'll get you a wind burn! He's got home run speed! He's just got too much class, Dan Morton. His try scoring ability is amazing. His footwork, his speed, his energy brings so much to a team and I've been lucky enough to play with him. He's been working so hard on his weaknesses like his defence and I think he's pretty much there as the complete player now. What a tackle from Dan Norton! I've had to adapt quite a lot to be fair. I think most people knew beforehand I wasn't one of the best defenders. I was more about you know trying to get the ball and scoring a few tries. Um, I'm pretty confident and you know happy in those areas now and feel you know I've improved as a player. The main focus point for me has probably been the Olympics. The elephant in the room, everybody's kind of been looking towards. To be able to represent Team GB with some absolute legends who have represented the shirt would be pretty phenomenal. And just the legacy, obviously, you know, to say to my son and to show him pictures when he grows up that, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, you know, I've been able to potentially feature the Team GB would be pretty amazing as well, pretty special. The Olympics has been massive for me. 
And when I first started, it wasn't even on the horizon. You were playing for World Series titles each year and the World Cup, the Commonwealth Games was the pinnacle. Six years ago when it got announced, I was thinking, have I still got it in my legs to, uh, to still be involved in six years' time? And as the years have gone on and I've still been here, it's become more of a reality. And, you know, I've been putting my hand up and trying my very best to get selected for Great Britain. It's huge for me and huge for the game. And it's only going to raise that profile as the years go on.